G'day Reapers, I'm Anya and welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today you're in for a very special episode because we are upgrading my Red Sea stash tank. My Red Sea 250 reefer. It is a black cabinet. It has been set up for an entire seven years and it's copped a fair bit of abuse here in the shop with people going past, flooding the shop. It's most certainly time for an upgrade for those reasons alone. However, the most exciting part for me is because the new tank is going to be bigger. And do you know what that means? I can fit more coral in. So I'm just so happy that the new Red Sea Reefer 300 XL is gonna have a little bit more height and a little bit more width. Another major advantage of having this tank upgraded is going to be the extra volume available in the new sump. Currently as it stands, this tank does not have a space for a refugium which is my favorite choice in nutrient export and i cannot wait to be able to rely on a nice healthy bed of ketomorpha down here to suck out all my nitrate and phosphate the other thing that's really exciting is that we're going to soon see on australian shores the new reef dose which is the red sea dosing pump which will certainly be incorporated into this new build We'll be able to put on the Red Sea supplements. We're gonna have a nice refugium and all in all, everything's gonna be really cool. And last but not least, the changeover gives us the opportunity to evacuate some of the nasty nuisance pests that have been growing in here for the past few years. I'm not too worried about the algae. I'm not even too worried about the Aptasia, but one priority I do have is to try very hard to remove some of these brittle starfish that have really exploded in their population and are really kind of smothering some of my tiny little frags. I've already had to remove some of the Goniopera that I had in here, which were being irritated by the brittle stars. And now I think this is going to be the best opportunity to try to make sure that none of those starfish come across to the new build. So now might be a great time to do a tour of the corals in my stash tank before it gets ripped apart. It's really easy to see the corals that I like the most by looking at this tank. I like to feature zoanthids as much as possible and we've put them up the top here on these magnet frag racks from the Alternative Reef in California and you can see this back one the back wall has been certainly very overrun by Sakura Sunrise which gives customers a great example of so what may happen when they start to buy their little zoophrags. I really love Montipora. There's a beautiful red thin Monty scroll in the top of the tank. However, if you look a little further down, there's some grafted Monty, there are some encrusting Monty like Gold Rush and Mystic Sunset and also a branching Setosa here, which I really can't wait to see how it's going to grow in time. Other SPS corals that I do like to feature are the low light SPS such as Leptoceras and Samacora. I've got here a really nice Faco lantern and a Jacko lantern Leptoceras, which it's really clear here how well they're doing in full shade. And I really like checking out the growth on them over time too. There's some Acropora here, which we've hoarded, and I tend to use them as an indicator for water quality. Just walking past, you can see straight away if something's a bit funny, if the acros, the polyps aren't extended, or if the color dulls down to a bit of brown. Moving further down, there are a couple of palm tree corals because I really tend to like nice soft corals too. I love the movement that they provide, and this is probably why Frog spawn is my favorite kind of euphilia. Now, just recently these have been renamed to Fembryophilia, so I have to remind myself of that. And these colors here are very seldomly found in Australian waters, and that is what makes them so unique. 
and so worthy of being put in the stash tank. Recently, we've even found some of these pieces are getting some little pups growing along the bases, which means we're going to be able to propagate them too. Further down, the bottom here is really just covered in Corallomorpharians. And we have the Discosoma over here, and there's a couple of unique ones, like the Magic Morph that has multiple colors, and also the Stripolips, which are kind of pink and blue at the same time. Further down this side, I feature all the Rhodactus, and of course it's not a very compatible uh, combination to have Rhodactus touching Discosoma, which is why they're segregated that way. In the middle of the Discosoma and the Rhodactus, I've got a very interesting tongue coral here, and it actually is um, an anthocoli, which is like when the fungi are um, grows a bit of a stem and then at the top of the stem it grows a new polyp which in the wild would uh, come off when it's top heavy and create a new coral. So this one actually under blues is quite a red colour and so it's often invoiced as red fungia which in itself is very unique but what I really like about this piece is that I've got the, <laughs> the anthocoli and the polyp as it's come off and also, we've got the same thing in the back here, which is a little hard to see, with Heliofungia and Wagon Wheel Fungia. So, really, I've got a nice representation here of the beautiful corals that are available in Australian waters. And it's very obvious that I'm running out of space. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today on the first episode of the Red Sea Reefer Stash Tank Upgrade. Be sure to join in for next episode as Brandon and I put together my new cabinet. Happy reefing! That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!